This one's about what the condenser does and why it does it. Now, I'm showing part of a refrigeration system here. Compressor with a high side line, putting in hot gas here. Outlet from the condenser going to a TXP. We're not going to go any farther than that with the system. I'll refer you to previous videos on the four parts of the uh, refrigeration system. But let's look at this condenser. And, okay, we're having hot gas coming out of here. That hot gas carries all the heat that was absorbed in the evaporator. It carries the heat of compression of the compressor. So it's all in this gas that's coming in here. Now I've got gas coming out into that condenser. Now it's going to flow out of here, hopefully as a liquid, and it goes to the TXV or whatever expansion device you have. Let's say I used a fixed orifice, which is just a small hole or a capillary tube, something like that. Okay, this gas takes up quite a bit of space. And if I was just going to pump gas into this, this condenser here, and it's just a square tank. Now, obviously, condensers are not square tanks generally. You know, I've got videos on that stuff. Everybody's got those. Obviously, this is not a normal condenser. It's just a rectangular tank. It would work as a condenser. Uh, the condensers are built so they can transfer heat well. But let's say this hot gas laden with all the BTUs in the system that have been absorbed and created by the compressor, they come in here and what's going to happen if this, this is a small hole. In fact, let's make this a little different. Let's take and snake this down into a little tiny piece of pipe. Okay, I've got a lot of hot gas coming in here. It won't all go through this. There's no way, unless you had a massive high pressure difference, you know, high side to low side, would you get enough gas through there? You could just pump gas through there. So what's it going to do? This pressure is going to go up. So as that pressure starts going up, it's going to try to get rid of that heat. Because the only way it can get rid of the heat is by transferring it. So as this uh, hot gas comes in here, now I've got something here that would be a terrible condenser. It would it would be terrible. It doesn't have enough surface area to get rid of the heat. So it's going to start building it up that pressure because I can't get that much gas through there. But you know something? I can get as much liquid through there as I need to. Liquid doesn't take up anywhere near as much space as gas. So what this is going to do, this is going to be a self-balancing part. This pressure is going to increase Say it starts out at 100 pounds, and then it's going to go up, and maybe it goes to 200, and it still can't get rid of the heat because it can't it can't turn into a liquid until it gets rid of the heat, and then I bring it up to 300. On well, this one, I might even go up to 400. Somewhere at that point, this thing is pushing out as much gas as it possibly can, but I'm still building up temperature here, or building up uh, pressure, to, uh, tell temperature too. But the pressure keeps going up in here. At some point, this is going to be able to transfer the heat out and turn that gas into a liquid. And it's all because this thing here would not let enough gas go through. So it had to turn in to a liquid. That's the only way I could get it through. Remember, 
not enough room for all that gas to go through. Remember, I keep adding gas all the time. There's not enough room in this little tiny expansion device to get rid of all that gas, but there is enough room to get rid of liquid. So I'm going to start building up liquid in here. Now regardless of how well this thing transfers heat out, see if it transferred heat out really good, you would do it at a low pressure, maybe 200. I'm not considering what kind of refrigerant we have in here. Uh, but it'll be at a lower temperature if it transferred out really good. It'll be at a higher temperature if it transferred out poorly. Using what we know on this, that I can't get enough gas through that little hole, this has to turn into a liquid. And it will. It'll either turn into a liquid or it'll exceed the ability of the compressor to be able to pump it. So, condensers are very automatic things. They work pretty much automatic, depending on how much, uh, let's say, outside temperature, how high the outside temperature is, uh, compared to the temperature of the gas, remember, temperature and pressure are related in these things. So, as this pressure goes up, it's going to find a point where it can turn into a liquid so it can get that refrigerant out of that condenser. Now, it desuperates, it condenses, and it subcools. That's what they all do that. But, if if you look at a condenser in this way, you'll understand that even if that condenser is completely blocked, let's say it's, the fan doesn't work on the thing or something like that, it's still going to condense. It's just going to condense at a very high pressure. And that tells you a lot of things about what's going on in, uh, in a system, what that head pressure actually is. So, consider that condenser, it will condense one way or another. Heck, if I just took this pipe and run it up here and then ran it over to this little uh, orifice without even using this tank, it would still condense. It might be a thousand pounds. It might take out the compressor, but it would condense. Just remember that gas can't get through the hole, so it has to be liquid, so it will raise its pressure until it gets high enough that it can condense. Okay, I uh, hope this makes sense. It's just another way of looking at how some of these parts work. That's it on this one.